Okay, when do I use normal, binomial or Poisson? That is the question. So for your normal, you've got a mean, you've got a standard deviation. It's continuous, okay? Um, we do actually have non-continuous ones where we do a continuity correction. But your normal distribution you've been doing since year 12, so hopefully you've got a handle on that. Your binomial, the bi means your two outcomes, the success or failure, the no for the number of trials, that's a set number of trials. The me, the my, the me, independence, um, the independent trials, and all for all trials have the same probability. Okay, the number of trials is discrete, the outcomes is discrete. The Poisson, you've actually got a discrete per continuous interval, what does that mean? Discrete means you can count them, so you can count the number of events and it's over a continuous interval, so that's time or area, something like that, not a certain number of trials. Normal, M for natural, the O for the standard deviation sign, the R for the real life continuous, M for the mean, A for the area under the graph, and L for the lambs. Lambs meaning it's a great example of the normal curve is the weight of newborn lambs. How do we remember normal? We need that picture in our minds. Normal, mean, standard deviation, continuous, that kind of thing. Binomial. This is a bit of a memory trick for the binomial. Bi, no, mean, L. Bi means the two possible outcomes, success or failure. No means the number of fixed identical trials. It's discrete. It's a bar graph, not a histogram. Me. Depend on no one. Independence. All. All of the trials have the same probability, constant probability. So that's how we want to remember binomial. Because it's got four conditions. How do we spot it? We check out the conditions. Okay. Um, you've got the BPD and the BCD. So for the BPD, we're looking up an exact number of successful trials. And with the BCD, we're looking up to and including a certain number of successful trials. Here we go back to Poisson. Let's look at this another way. We've got the fish representing the event. Okay, and the fish can breed, so we can get more <laughs> in the tank than we started with. You know, with your fixed number of trials with binomial, uh, if you've got 10 trials, then the maximum successful outcomes is 10. But if you've got 10 fish in a fish tank, they could breed and you could end up with more. Um, just think of it that it's an event and there's no upper limit. Okay, The water that the fish is in is representing our continuous interval. So it's time or space. It's not a certain number of trials. It's in an hour that kind of thing. So if there's um, four, normally the mean is four accidents in an hour, then in every 15 minutes you'd expect one accident. But there could be a hundred, okay? Now it works the same way, but different if you like. So the PPD, we're looking for an exact number of occurrences of the event. And the PCD, we're up to and including the number of occurrences for the event. Okay, So once you've worked out which distribution it is, the actual calculations um, are fairly easy. One of the major differences between your binomial and your Poisson is your Poisson, you only need the mean. Binomial, you need the probability and you need the fixed number of trials. With your normal, you've got a mean and a standard deviation for achieved forward, straightforward questions. So there's your memory trick. Normal, binomial, or Poisson. So you need to know the conditions of each what, so that you can pick what distribution to use in each question.